Balova and Vasilia. But American Jill Watson is determined that a pair's medal will finally be hers. Also today, the ladies' championship. Katarina Vitz attempt to reclaim her world title from this lady, Debbie Thomas, and the challenge of two more Americans, Jill Trenary and Karen Kadavy, here on the banks of the Ohio River. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Ryan here in Cincinnati. Welcome to our continuing coverage of the World Figure Skating Championships. Today, the pairs competition, and what a competition it has been. Through the short program, the American team of Watson and Oppergaard find themselves standing in third place. Now, this is an event that's been dominated for many, many years by the Soviets. And not since Peter and Kitty Carruthers' success back in the early 1980s has an American team been in this position to win a medal in the World Championships. Let's take a look at the standings entering the free skating program. You see the Soviet world champions on top, Ekaterina and Gordieva and Sergei Grinkov. They're followed by the defending Olympic champions, Elena Velova and Oleg Vasilyev. Then come Watson and Oppegaard, followed by the Canadian pair of Cynthia Kuhl and Mark Rousen. With us as usual on our figure skating coverage, Olympic and world champion Scott Hamilton. And Scott, the excitement was really something here the other night in the Riverfront Coliseum when Watson and Oppegaard performed so well in the short program the crowd I know feels they can win a medal here do you it was electric in here the other night for the short program and third place was a little bit of a surprise but we're looking at a brand new pair they are so much improved the new strength new coaching new direction and if practice is any any indication of what's going to happen tonight then they could walk away with a medal well now then uh, do you think they'll play it safe tonight or do they go for it well if it were up to me I'd just go just go for a nice solid routine don't take any chances don't do anything that would risk the medal just go out hit a strong solid performance and put the pressure on everybody else well the skaters are just concluding their warm-ups down at ringside a lot of tension among the coaches looking on there with them is our judy Blumberg. tim i talked to jill earlier and she sounded very confident she said they were ready as a matter of fact both peter and jill seem more relaxed than they have been in years but i think someone who would know more about their confidence right now is don laws one of their coaches Don, how do you feel, based on their practices this week, that Jill and Peter are going to fare tonight? We expect them to fare very well and hit a medal position with a clean performance. Are they going to take any risks? No risks, just what they've been trained to do. The newly crowned national champions have been training for a chance to change the music at the medal ceremony. is a familiar refrain at pairs competitions and world champions Ekaterina Gordieva and Sergei Grinkov are the latest in a long line of Soviet successes in this event. Olympic champions Elena Velova and Oleg Vasilyev are eager to regain the world title they lost last year to their younger rivals. While yet another Soviet pair, Zelizneva and Makarov, are threatening as well. For America's Jill Watson and Peter Oppegaard, dreams of a medal in Cincinnati to replace the nightmares they have faced in other world championships. In 1984, skating with a different partner, tiny Jill Watson slammed into the boards and was forced to drop out of the competition. A year later, debuting with Peter Oppegaard, more disaster. mishap at last year's world, their future in the sport looked bleak. We still have some things to work on. I think for us the most, the, it's the pressure, you know, uh, having to go out and concentrate and the better the pairs are getting each year, the quality is. And so it's a little more demanding. Well, not yet familiar faces, Jill and Peter hope that friendly fans and home ice in Cincinnati will help them leave their past frustrations well behind them. The attention they were receiving was a welcome boost to their morale and their desire to atone for last year. We really realized, hey, you know, we enjoy this and 
we've got so much more to give. Let's go on and give it a shot. And um, so we worked really hard this year, and so <laughs> I feel good about we it. We said before we're leaving Worlds last year was we'll be back, and we we wanted to come back and come back strongly. So right. we feel pretty good. The short program would present the first real test of their newfound confidence. It was their best ever short program, and a medal seemed within reach. Their primary rivals for a medal, Zelizneva and Makarov, were still to skate. But something was wrong. to the judges that their music had not started properly, which under the rules, they were permitted to do. After a discussion among the judges, the pair was permitted to start over. But the miscue had clearly disturbed their concentration. As the marks came up, it was clear their metal hopes were dashed. Representing the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, Ekaterina Gordiva and Sergei Grinkov. The defending world champions in first place coming into this final free skating program, she has captivated the hearts here in Cincinnati. 15-year-old Ekaterina Gordieva, 20-year-old Sergei Grinkov. They are both students in Moscow. And as most pairs do, they open up this program real big. At the European Championships, I thought this was a triple twist, but it's actually a quadruple twist lift. Beautifully done. They're the only pair in the competition that do that move. that I never really understood about pair skating. They're going about 15 miles an hour, and she's about a little over six feet up in the air. Takes a lot of guts. And no net. No net. Which brings up the point, Scott, of this so-called one-and-a-half situation. The taller man with a shorter, lighter woman. Must be an advantage for them. Well, they take full advantage of their height and weight difference. They do quads instead of triples, and they do a lot of throws that normally would be difficult for other people or a little easier for them. Oh, and he stepped out of it. Oh. 
But with all the difficult things they've done so far, I don't really think that that will affect him in the judge's eye. she has on the ice, still 15 years of age, and she can flash that ravishing smile particularly well when they pass the judges. <laughs> always smiling, always looking into the audience. They've really accepted her, and they've been wonderful, the crowds have been. and take a look at that opening move. It is really something to see. Begins the program. The replay of the quadruple twist lift. You can count as she goes around. She's up. One, two, three, four, and out. The only pair that does that. Rodier well, and Grinkoff. Hands full of flowers and in first place. And now the marks for technical merit for Katarina Cortiva and Sergei Grinkoff. First, the technical marks. This is for what they did. 7, 5 Mostly 5.8s, five eight, a couple 5.9s, five five and a 5.7. I think that had something to do with the double eight, flip that he stepped out of. They're not nine, quite as high as I would expect. Eight, and the lift that they came out of a little bit eight, early. That leaves lots of room for other pairs. So it'll be interesting eight, to see what happens in their second mark. Point nine. And now the well, here come the marks for artistic impression. impression. Let's see if there's even more room. 5.6. Oh, these are a lot nine, lower than I would expect from a defending world eight, champion. A 5-6 from the Canadian five judge and a 5-7 from the Swiss judge. That leaves the door eight, wide open for any pair to come in and win this thing. Eight, five any pair like... Eight. Representing the United States. Jill Watson and Peter Oppegaard, third after the short program, and there is room atop the marks held by the defending champions, Gorgieva and Grinkov. Can they do it here? They were magnificent in the short program. She is the Firebird today. With the history they've had at the World Championships, you might think that they would play it a little bit overly cautious. They've had a lot of bad luck and a lot of falls, but their opening move will set the pace for the rest of the program. Like the other pairs, they open up real big. They're opening with a triple twist lift. Beautifully done into a throw double loop, and she nailed it. Jill and Peter from the rest of the pairs and they do jump in opposite directions. She jumps from left to right and he from right to left. It's like a mirror effect. Their next move is something that's done them in in the past. It's a throw double axle. Look how high he throws her. Done. That's got to make 
pace is still great. It looks like her speed are really under it. double axles and the side by side triples that the Russians do and that could hurt them. Another throw, a throw, triple sow cow. <laughs> and she hangs on to it. When you're that small and you go that high on a throw like that, it's really difficult to hang on to it sometimes, but she did so beautifully. What a great moment for them. With all the problems they've had in the past, to come up with a performance like this, with a medal opportunity, it's got to make them feel great. Well, Scott, you said there is room atop the marks of Gavin Grinkoff. Watson and Alphagard fully realize that, and they obviously feel good about their performance. Here's another look at that lift that Jess gives me the willies. She comes down, look how close her. It's called a swoop lift. And he really brings her close to And She has no control over her own destiny. It's kind of, you never catch me do anything like that. Jill Watson executed perfectly with her partner, Peter Oppegaard. And you can see the smile on her the face knowing it was done well. Jill Watson and Here they Peter come. Are this will be interesting. 5.5. 
a couple tenths uh, lower and a tenth seven. lower than the than the world five champions Gordiev and Grinkoff, but they five didn't have the quad seven. twist that Grinkoff five and Gordiev had. They didn't eight. have the side by side double five axles, but seven. they turned in a wonderful five routine. And they've got to feel seven. really good about those marks. Five point five and five point seven. Well, what they did, they did well. Let's find out if these artistic impression marks will get them into the medals. And now the marks for artistic and impression And these should be a little bit higher than their technical 5. mark. 5.7. And that should do it. 5. That should get them 8. at least the bronze medal. 5. There's only 8. one pair to skate, and that's Belova and Vasiliev. And uh, they've been erratic. 5. So it's going to be interesting to see whether 5. they come away with the bronze 7. or possibly 5. a silver. 7. So Velova and Vasiliev, the Olympic champion, Cincinnati, uh, Elena Velova and Oleg Vasiliev. They are a husband and wife Elena team, Olympic champions and two-time world champions. In second place, coming into the final free skating program, they want badly to regain the world crown they lost to Gordiev and Grinkov a year ago. They are very artistic in the way they deliver their program. But what sets them apart from the other pairs is that she spends a lot of time in the air. It's kind of like Air Belova. Side by side triple jumps. Triple toe loops. Oh, and he hangs on to his. It's a little tilted. dynamic at the beginning of their program than, say, Gordiev and Brinkov, their fellow Soviets. Well, they don't open with the same kind of 100-mile-an-hour skating, but they do open with a lot of really difficult moves. The side-by-side -side triple toe loops they landed, they're the only ones that do that. And they do a lot of throws at the beginning of their program, too. And this next move is one of them, a throw triple sound count. wonderful to watch, but their programs just don't have that same electricity that Jill and Peters do.
getting to do that. the Olympic champion and unlikely to regain their world title from Gordieva and Drinkov. The battle will be for the silver and the bronze. And look where the Russians are sitting. It's probably the only undiplomatic thing that's happened all week to get the Russians up in the rafters. <laughs> They've been enthusiastic. Peter Apagard is interested in the marks to come as Balova and Vasilia. The marks for technical merit for Elena. They should be pretty good. They did a lot of hard Vasilia. stuff in their program. 5.6. Mostly eight, eights and sevens. Those five, are a little point, bit higher eight, than Jill and Peters. They had five, mostly sevens point, and sixes. Eight, five, so point, uh, they're ahead eight, right now, but five, we'll see how what the judges seven, thought about their artistic five, mark. Point, Difficult seven, stuff, Scott, but five, it seems to me seven, that uh, their program lacks a certain five, flow and continuity. Eight. Even the selection of music lacks a little. Let's see how the artistic impression comes down. Their marks for artistic impression are 5.7. And there you have a eight, split of opinion. You got five, five sixes point and you got seven, five nine. So five some of them liked nine, it and some of them didn't. It was a nice program, nine, but it didn't have the speed and the power that the others six, presented. Five but it does six, win them the silver five, medal. The Olympic seven, champions, their target was five, the gold, nine, but they have to settle for you. the silver. In first place, the defending champions, Gordieva and Grinkov. And in third place, Jill Watson and Peter Oppegaard, who must be happy with a bronze. Waxman and Wagoner were seventh. Let's go to Judy Blumberg. At what point in your program did you know or did you feel like you had it in your hand? <laughs> well, um, there was no point that I really felt like I had it in hand because we had to keep our, com our concentration till the end. But after the throw double axle, I really felt like I had my feet under me and that we were, we were really on tonight. Same for me. When we hit that opening throw, we feel that all we have to do is concentrate and push through the rest of it. You know, last year we did a piece on you regarding the falls. Right. Did that even come into your mind tonight? No, not at all tonight. Um, sometimes you think about it throughout the year, but tonight I was just concentrating on what we'd done in practice and um, the way we could do our routine. Well, congratulations. You guys must be just excited for anything. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. 